Hello, so in this video I'm going to take you through some calculations from balanced equations which is part of Unit 1 in the National 5 Chemistry course. Um, this video would also be helpful for revision before you start calc more calculations for the higher chemistry course. So by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to calculate the mass of a product produced in a given chemical reaction. Now, when you're given these calculations in an SQ assessment, you will be given the balanced chemical equation to do these, so you don't have to come up with the, uh, the chemical equation yourself anymore. Okay, so in chemistry, when we're carrying out chemical reactions, because atoms don't get lost or gained in reactions they just change structures and make different products then if we have a balanced chemical equation we can carry out certain calculations to determine how much of a product we would make or if we know how much product we want to make we can calculate how much of the reactants we would need um, and this is all works because the equation is balanced and when we take the reactants in quantities known as moles then it allows us to compare these reactants so it's important when we're doing these calculations that we have, we consider the moles of reactants that are reacting and the moles of products that are being produced rather than the exact masses because every substance has a different mass. So it's not fair to compare masses because really what's happening is it's individual particles reacting with each other. So that's why we tend to deal with moles in chemical calculations rather than just dealing with the mass on its own. So any calculation in chemistry is going to deal with moles in some respect. Um, and that'll be slightly different depending on how you choose to do the calculation. So an example of a calculation you would maybe come across from an equation would be the example given here. So here we've got the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So this would be described as the combustion of magnesium. So you're we are asked to calculate the mass of magnesium oxide that could be produced if 2.43 grams of magnesium is burned in excess oxygen. So something to note here is if, a react, if you're told a reactant is in excess, that means you have more of it than is required or more than you need. So there's going to be some left over at the end. So that means the amount of that reactant you have doesn't affect the final mass of your products or product as it is in this case because you're only making one thing. So we would describe, the whole calculation is really based off of the amount of magnesium we've got because that's the one, the reactant that's not in excess. You do a bit more on this in higher where you look at limiting and excess reagents and you work out which one's in excess and which one's the limiting one that's going to determine how much you produce. Um, but for National 5, you don't have to worry about that. You'll be told what's in excess and which reactant's the limiting one. So if we actually do this calculation, sorry, too far. So there's a couple ways you can do these. So I'm going to show you both ways for this first example. And you can decide if you've got a way that you prefer. Um, and then for the examples that come after, I'll probably just do it in um, the first way I'm going to show you. So first thing to do is to identify the two. There's usually two chemicals you need to take into account when you're doing these calculations. So you want to identify them first of all. So you're asked to calculate the mass of magnesium oxide. So the magnesium oxide must be important because you're trying to calculate the mass of it. So you then find magnesium oxide in the balanced equation you're given, which is this one here. And we're trying to calculate the mass of that. So I'm going to put a question mark above it. And then you're told that you have 2.43 grams of magnesium. So I'm going to write 2.43 grams on top of the magnesium. And then the oxygen's in excess, so that means we don't have to worry about the oxygen because we've got more than enough, so it's not going to actually affect how much product we've produced. So this method that we're going to do here is known as direct proportion, and this is probably the one people find most straightforward, um, and it actually bypasses you having to count numbers of moles or calculate numbers of moles. Um, so although it may look like we're not necessarily doing, dealing with numbers of moles here and we are dealing with masses, it's just the way the calculations laid out, we initially convert the moles into a mass. Um, so we are technically dealing with moles, but it just looks like we're not. So we want to first of all start with the mole ratio from the equation. So in the balanced equation, it tells us that if I write the chemicals we're interested in above here, it just kind of keeps you right. 
So we have one mole of magnesium producing one mole of magnesium oxide. Okay, so now what we need to do is convert these moles into masses because it, that's what we've been given. We've been given a mass. So the mass of one mole of magnesium is just the relative atomic mass, which is 24.5. Okay, so one mole of magnesium weighs 24.5 grams. And you just look that up in the data booklet on the relative atomic mass table. So then the gram formula mass of magnesium oxide, so that would be 24.5 for the magnesium plus 16 for the oxygen. So if you add that together, I'm just going to put out my calculator to be on the safe side. That gives you 40.5. So that's the mass of one mole of magnesium oxide. So that means if we were to react 24.5 grams of magnesium in excess oxygen, we would produce 40.5 grams of magnesium oxide. But we don't have 24.5 grams. We have 24.3, eh, sorry, 2.43. So we've scaled down to one gram, first of all. So we find out how much we would make if we only had one gram of magnesium. So that ends up as 40.5 divided by 24.5. And then we multiply up to the mass that we actually have, which is 2.43 grams. So that's 40.5 over 24.5 times by 2.43. So then if you put all that into your calculator, that gives you 4.02 grams if you're to round it to two decimal places. Okay, so that means if we, when we burn 2.43 grams of magnesium in excess oxygen, we should make 4.02 grams of magnesium oxide. So that's the direct proportion way of doing it. And now I'm going to show you the other way where you calculate the number of moles and use the mole ratio. So you might prefer this and it actually translates a bit better to titration calculations as well, which is a different topic within unit one. So you can decide yourself which way you prefer. So again, you still start off identifying the substances you're interested in. So we still want to know the magnesium oxide mass. And we still know we've got 2.43 grams of magnesium. So again, write the chemical formulas just to keep yourself right. And because we're dealing with masses, we are going to be using the NMGFM relationship. So the mole relationship for mass. So I'm going to list the variables in that relationship underneath. So you do get given this equation in the data booklet, M equals N over GFM. However, you may have also come across the triangle where you've got N on the bottom um, and then GFM. Okay, so this means if you're trying to find the number of moles, you would do M divided by GFM. If you're trying to find the mass, you would do N times GFM. And if you're trying to find the gram formula mass, you would do M over N, which is very rare to do it that way, but it's sometimes useful. So then pull out the information that we've got above. So we're trying to work out the mass of magnesium oxide. So I'm going to put a question mark there. And then we've got 2.43 grams of magnesium. So that's the mass of magnesium. You'll never be given the number of moles usually. So that the N equals should usually be left blank. And then the GFM, again, you calculate from the data booklet. So the GFM of the magnesium was 24.5. And the GFM of the magnesium oxide was 40.5. You work that out in the exact same way as I just showed you. So all we can calculate at the moment is the number of moles of magnesium. So N is equal to M over GFM. So that'd be 2.43 over 24.5. So let's put that into a calculator. It gives you, so we'll just round it to so 0 0.099 moles. You could round it to 0 0.01 if you want, eh, sorry, 0 0.1 if you wanted to. Okay, once you've got the number of moles of that reactant, you then look at the mole ratio to see how many moles of the other one you must be able to produce. So because this is a one-to-one -one ratio, that means you'll produce the same number of moles of magnesium oxide. Okay, and now you know the number of moles and the GFM, you can work out M. So M is N times GFM. So that's 0 0.099 times 40.5. And we should find that we get the same answer as we did in the previous way, 
two grams. Okay, so the first way I showed you was by direct proportion. This way is through mole relationship. Okay, moles to mass. So it's up to you which one you prefer, uh, but I'll do the rest of these calculations via the direct proportion, the rest of these examples. But you should end up with the right answer whatever way you do it. So this time we're trying to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced. So this is the carbon dioxide here. And we've got three grams of ethane. So ethane's the C2H6. So from the ratio, this time we've got one mole giving us two moles. So one mole of ethane would be, so that's two times 12 for the carbons and then six times one for the hydrogens. So if you were to add all that up, that gives you 30 grams. So one mole of ethane would be 30 grams. Carbon dioxide, that's 12 for the carbon and then two times 16 for the oxygen. So if you add all that up, that gives you 44 grams. So that's for one mole, but we need two moles. So that means that that would be two times 44. So essentially 30 grams would give you 88 grams of carbon dioxide. So then we scale down to find one gram. So that would be 88 over 30. And then we multiply up to the mass that we've got, which is three grams. So that's 88 over 30 times by three, which gives you 8.8 grams of carbon dioxide. So if you did it the mole ratio way, uh, then you should end up with 8.8 .8 as well. Next example, well, they've all been named example two, so this is a technically example three. So calculate the mass of silver displaced. So if something's been displaced, that essentially means it's been kicked out of the solution, so you're most likely expecting it to be a product. So here's silver here, so we're trying to work out the mass of that. And we're given the mass of copper, so that's 3.8. 175 grams. So one mole gives us two moles again. If you look at the mole ratio, there's no number in front of the copper, so that means there's only one mole. There's a two in front of the silver, which means there's two moles. And then one mole of copper weighs 63.5 grams, that's its relative atomic mass. And two moles of silver would be two times 108 grams, because one mole of silver is 108. So that's 36.5 grams is gonna produce times two, 216 grams of silver. So we don't have 63.5 grams. So we find what one gram would be. So that's 216 over 63.5. And we multiply up to the mass we have, which is 3.175. So 216 over 63.5 times 3.175. If you put that into your calculator, that would give you 10.8 grams of silver. Yeah, and again, you should get that answer if you did it via the other method as well. Next example, which is, oh, I did change the number for this one. <coughs> this should be technically example four now, sorry. So calculate the mass of water produced. Here's the water here, question mark. When one kilogram of hydrogen gas, so here's the hydrogen gas here, so one kilogram is burned in excess oxygen. So the oxygen's in excess, we don't need to worry about that. So we've got one mole producing one mole this time. No number, no number. So <clears throat> one mole of hydrogen weighs two grams, because that's two times one for the two hydrogens. Water would be two times one, and then 16 for the oxygens, so that's 18 grams. So two grams of hydrogen gas would give us 18 grams of water. We don't have two grams though, we have a lot more than that, but we still find one gram, so 18 over two. And then one kilogram is equivalent to a thousand grams. So that'd be 18 over two times 1,000. Which 
gives you 9,000 grams of water. And you can, if you want to, convert it into kilograms, but the question specifically asks for the mass in grams, so you would just leave it there, to be honest. Okay, but if it was asking for it in kilograms, then you would divide it by 1,000 to put it into kilograms. So then example five is slightly different. So this is where you're trying to calculate the mass of the reactant that you need to make a certain amount of product. So you don't really need to worry about identifying that straight away. If you <clears throat> write above the equation, like I've been doing in the other examples, you'll see that once you've extracted the information from the text. So calculate the mass of copper. So copper's here. So that's a question mark. And then you're, this time you're trying to displace 4.5 grams of silver. So the silver's here. So that's 5.4 grams. <clears throat> so this time you should see that you're starting with knowing the silver and you're trying to work out the copper. So I'm going to write it around this way this time because it's not fitting the equation. So this time we've got two moles of silver because there's a two in front of it, giving you one mole of copper because there's no number in front of it. <clears throat> so two moles of silver, I did have before, it was 216 grams, the gram formula, uh, the relative atomic mass times by two. And then one mole of copper is 63.5 grams. Okay, but we don't have 216 grams of silver, so we find one gram. So 63.5 divided by 216. Then we multiply up to the amount that we've got, which is 5.4. So 63.5 over 216 times 5.4. So that's going to give us 1.59 grams if you round it to two decimal places. Okay, so if we wanted to displace 5.4 grams of silver, then we would need 1.59 grams of copper. So hopefully now you're confident enough to be able to calculate the mass of a specified sub substance produced or required for a reactant if you're given the mass of another compound. Thank you.